Okay, guys. Decided I was going to dive into this and see if I can figure out why I need to use a shim on the CPU of the Plevo P870 DM3. And as I started looking, I found that the CPU retention mechanism is making direct physical contact at the back edge closest to the hinge on the retention mechanism. Now if you look in the to the left of there, you can see the C-clip. The C-clip is not making contact with the heat sink. If you notice what I'm talking about, there's actually an air space there. So removing that C-clip is not going to do anything to help. The interference with die contact, or the IHS contact, I should say, with the heat sink, is because the heat sink is hitting on the retention mechanism. You see what I'm talking about there? You can actually see a little bit of abrasion where it's been rubbing. Now if you move to the front, look what a big gap we have. We've got a big air space here in the front. And it looks like the C-clip is in fact making contact with the heat sink at the front here. There's no air space like there is at the other end. So the heat sink is not sitting flat on there. See what I'm talking about? The airspace right here. You see it's got a huge gap there. And it's got no gap at the back. So there's one reason why we need a shim. See what I mean there? There's no space there at all. But yet the C-clip if I get at the right angle, you can see that it's got an airspace, so the CPU or the heat sink does not need to be pushed down closer. But at the front here, it's lifted off because of that C clip. So there's two reasons you need a shim. So we're going to take this part and uh, look at it a little bit closer with the heat sink removed. It's possible that if the heat sink copper plate is hitting on that C-clip here in the front, it's not able to make it sit level with this making contact back here. So I'm going to investigate that further. I just thought it was interesting that the front edge up here, there's an air gap and then back here there's not. I can't see the other side well enough to tell but I have no thermal pads on for the uh, VRMs and MOF sets right now this is just a dry fit so I thought that was interesting to say the least now looking at it with the heat sink removed laying a straight edge which is a, an aluminum heat sink see what I'm talking about back here in the back corner right here see the eye just that's it's resting on this there's not any airspace to speak of but if I move this closer to the front you can see there is a big airspace right in here on each side so I believe what's happening is when you bolt the heat sink on it's hitting on this bracket back here instead of resting on the heat sink. So by taking a shim, setting it there, that takes care of that problem. Now we've got a bigger space. So, it looks to me this bracket is either made wrong or it's bent because back on this back edge of the CPU closest to the fan here, it's making contact with the bracket before it hits the IHS. And if there's any bowing or distortion in this heat plate, then that's going to be exacerbated 
if the uh, if the ears where the screws are start to fatigue and work inward that's just going to make it even worse so interesting observations thought you guys might have appreciate what I found here again if you look at that there it's really hard to tell and I don't have the greatest lighting in here but it looks like I can see daylight from the flashlight coming underneath the IHS like it's being held up off of the side here so now let's take a look at this heat sink itself and see what we can find. I've used this aluminum heat sink as a straight edge and it's resting on each end where the screws are and as you can see there's light shining through all the way across underneath. A substantial gap, it's probably half a millimeter, maybe not quite a half a millimeter but enough to be a problem. We've got multiple things working against us. We've got a heat plate on the CPU heatsink that is not flat. Uh, so there's there's strike one. We've got the C clips on the screws that are bot the heatsink bottoming out before the heat plate comes into full contact with the IHS. So strike two, then strike three. We've got one end of the heatsink making contact with that retention mechanism that isn't uh, really designed correctly so not good so now let's do a test fit you can see I've reduced my thermal pad thickness by half millimeter for both pads there's uh, I can't have four strikes in a ball game but Clevo does there because they use thermal pads that were too thick and also holding it away so I've got a small amount of cryo knot there and I'm just going to take this CPU heat sink without the screws and the thinner pads and I'm just going to press down on it and see what kind of spread we get let's hold it down there for a second putting probably more pressure than we'd ever get from the screws with my thumb and my hand here but I want to see how that squished out. So not too terrible bad. I mean, considering it was a small amount of cryonaut that spread pretty well. So there's that. So I'm going to put this back together and uh, see if it's any better than it was before without the shim. So here I ran Cinebench at 4.7 gigahertz. And you can see that the temps are pretty good. Uh, bumped it up to 4.8 gigahertz. Temps still fairly good. And then I ran a fire strike with the uh, CPU at 48 and GPU um, with plus 215, plus 600 on core and memory. So overall, not too bad. So what can we conclude from this? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that they've got a mess on their hands and I think I'm going to go ahead and look into soldering a half millimeter shim to the CPU heat sink should improve tension um, which is important to use CLU I'm using Crynaut on it right now not my favorite but as uh, Prima discovered removing those C clips does help um, especially because on one end uh, it's being held away from the CPU IHS on the other end it's grounding out on that bracket so it can't even sit right so uh, thanks for watching and once I uh, mod the heatsink by soldering a shim in I will uh, show that and report on the results take care guys